The NCAA just released the worst rankings I've ever seen. NC State's duel against Pitt had a bit of controversy, and the top three teams in the Big Ten are essentially finalized. Penn State's number one, Iowa's number two, but who is number three? All that in this week's wrestling headlines presented by Defenso. Now let's stop stalling and start talking about our first wrestling headline, and that is that the new set of NCAA rankings are just absurd. I mean, literally some of the worst that I have ever seen. And Yanni Giacomahalas of Cornell being ranked number three at 149 isn't the worst of these. In fact, I have three of these terrible, terrible rankings that I'm going to tell you about because they're just so bad. So what are these rankings? Well, these are the coaches rankings, the second of the season. And what that means is that all the coaches in the NCAA vote and essentially rank each weight. They're assigned a different weight class, a couple different weight classes per coach, and they are given certain criteria. First of all, a wrestler must have wrestled 15 D1 matches, so matches against D2, D3 guys don't count. They must have wrestled within the past 30 days, and then there are a couple other criteria that they're ranking on basically how they're doing this season, and as well as their strength of schedule and their opponent's strength of schedule that they're comparing all of these things. So, there was some drama that erupted on Twitter over this with Justin Bash of Bash Mania saying, you know, Matt Scouts is really frustrated when he's silent through something like a terrible coaches rankings drop. And Matt Scouts really replied, I've been telling you guys for years to pay no mind to them. They're terrible. Act like they don't exist. And Twitter erupted over all of this. I mean, they were Twitter was going off wrestling Twitter about all of this. So just how terrible is this? Well, let's start with the one of the worst rankings. Okay. At 133. And you see right off the top, Dayton Fix, number one, of Oklahoma State, Vito Arujao, number two, of Cornell, and Roman Bravo Young, returning national champion at number three. Is this a joke? It has to be a joke. Well, no, it's not a joke. This is the two-time back-to-back national champion, Roman Bravo Young, who hasn't lost a match since 2020 at Big Tens. Hasn't lost a match this year. Has never lost to either of these top two guys. Never lost to Dayton Fix. And here we go. He's ranked number three. There are a couple reasons why this could have happened. I'll get to some of those in some of my takeaways. One of them, I think, was maybe a strength of schedule. I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't see that this could have happened. So what are some of these other terrible rankings? Well, another one doesn't come until... And yeah, there's some, like, you can get into the nitty-gritty of, like, well... One guy should be ranked a couple of spots ahead, but I'm just talking about some of the worst ones. 197. Nina Bonacorsi, number one. And no, I don't think that's a terrible thing. He should be number one. Michael Beard, number two. Max Dean, number three. And eh, I mean, I could go back and forth with that. You see no Rocky Elam in there. And that is because he hasn't wrestled the full amount of matches. So that's not the absurd part here. The absurd part comes all the way down at number 33. Bernie Truow of Cal Poly. Really? The multiple-time All-American. Ranked number 33. Now, he does not have enough official matches. He hasn't wrestled within the past 30 days either. He The last time he wrestled was the beginning of January. And the weird thing is that he is in these rankings, though. He's number 33, where Rocky Elam, who doesn't have the official set of matches is not in the ranking. So this one, if he is truly like ranked all the way down at one uh, at number 33, it's absurd. I think it has to be a mistake because that just makes no sense to me why a why Bernie Truau who has had a pretty solid year so far, bumping up at 197 is number 33. And the third worst ranking comes at heavyweight. Mason Paris number 1 Deserved. I think he deserves that number one spot. Cassiope, number two. Lucas Davidson of Northwestern, number three. And Greg Kirkfleet of Penn State, number four. What? So, Greg Kirkfleet, he did lose to Mason Paris. Mason Paris is undefeated on the season. He's a strong winning streak. But he did not lose to Anthony Cassiope of Iowa. He did not lose to Lucas Davison, who also has losses to Anthony Cassiope and Mason Paris. I thought maybe this could be strength of schedule, but both Kirkfleet 
and Davison have beat Orndorff and Helger, who are both ranked guys at this weight. It just doesn't make much sense. And so I took to Twitter and wondered, like, what are other people saying about this? Chris Pendleton said, how does RBY get 12 out of 14 first place votes from the coaches and gets that ranking? So what he's saying is that 12 of the 14 coaches who ranked 133 put RBY at number one. So are there a couple of guys, a couple of coaches who ranked RBY lower, maybe number two, number three, or like so darn low that it screws up the rankings and the average and the median? Possibly, it's it's possible that a coach just forgot to do the rankings, and I've, I've seen these kind of involved on the back end of this and what happens, and it's possible, it's possible, and I'll get to why I think this is all kind of ridiculous in a second. Kristen Piles said of Flow Wrestling, okay, 149 might be worse. Gomez, Sasso, Yanni, and yes, Yanni being number three behind, behind Gomez, I would understand because Gomez beat him. Behind Sasso... I don't get that. And also, Gomez did take a loss. So, like, Yanni should probably be the number one ranked guy at the weight. Coach Wynn Mahalik said, actually, 197 is the worst with Bernie Truow. He's a top 10 wrestler, number 33 in the coaches' rank. Goes from earning an allocation for his conference to not earning one if this happens in the last coaches' ranking. And that's where things get scary for these smaller conferences. Like, I'm less concerned about RBY being ranked number three than, like, a Bernie Truow of Cal Poly who, like, who knows with the allocations for these smaller conferences, for Pac-12s, for SOCONs. It's important that these guys get the rankings that they need for the allocations for their NCAA ranking and seeding and, and all that. Bash said, this is just asinine. Stop letting coaches do rankings. Stop letting it happen. And I think that this is going to lead into my takeaways here because why are coaches doing rankings? It's been happening for years. I think it's absolutely Honestly, ridiculous. Why? Well, because coaches don't have the time to do rankings. Coaches are worried about coaching things, such as training their wrestlers for dual meets, training their wrestlers for the NCAA tournament, getting their wrestlers ready for that. Why are we letting the coaches who are focused on their team and honestly, their conference, eventually, yeah, the rest, they're worried about some of those top guys, but they don't know the ins and outs and intricacies of all these things. The little minutia. And I'm not expecting them to. A lot of coaches say the media should probably be doing rankings. Asking like Fanco Wrestling or Flow Wrestling and Intermat, Win Magazine, the Open Mat. Why are they not doing the official rankings and helping with the allocations? That would make a little bit more sense to me. Now, RBY may be ranked number three in the coaches poll, but he'll still have to defend his title. He'll need to be on the offense against guys like Dayton Fix and Vito Arujo, just like you should be on the offense against skin disease. Otherwise, you're just as crazy as those coaches who ranked RBY so low. Whether you're a wrestler protecting against ringworm or an ex-wrestler like myself protecting against dry skin and acne, Defenso products will keep your skin feeling healthy all year round. Use their body wipes, soap, shower gels, and FDA approved acne care products for a cleaner feeling. Trust me, you'll feel rejuvenated because their products are natural and free from harsh chemicals and perfume. Plus, my favorite part is they're made here in the USA. Start defending your body today by going to defensesoap.com. It's the first link down in the description below. Thanks to Defense Soap for sponsoring this video. And that moves us to our second wrestling headline, which is that the winner of the ACC is Pitt, Virginia Tech, NC State. Well, I'll tell you exactly who that is, but first we have to talk about some of the results that happened in the ACC over the weekend that played an effect to this. The first of those that you saw pop up was, yes, the Virginia Tech Hokies did beat North Carolina pretty darn bad, 28 to 8. The Tar Heels ended up only winning two of the matches, but two of the matches were pretty big ones. Lachlan McNeil earned a major decision, but the second most important one, I think, or probably the most important one, was that Austin O'Connor earned a major decision over Bryce Andonian. This is not something that I expected to happen. You're going to see him get a takedown in the second period here over Andonian, toss him to his back. Now, of course, Andonia is able to scramble out of that. He's one of the most like electric, fun, like energetic wrestlers that is able to flow with any of these situations in the entire NCAA. But these two have wrestled before, Andonian and O'Connor. They've wrestled at 149 on four occasions. O'Connor's won every single one of these. So I, I, got, I have a couple of schools of thought here. One is that I'm not as concerned with an upset like this for Andonian because 
Austin O'Connor just knows his skill set so well. But on the other hand, I will say this was an impressive win for Austin O'Connor, who Andonian is a top five guy at 157 pounds right now. And there was a lot of talk on Twitter and chatter about it, about why is Austin O'Connor not ranked number one? Well, Peyton Rob's number one at the weight. I, I don't have any arguments about that. You see Rock Harrison, commentator and announcer, said, Hey, D1 coaches who submit rankings, Austin O'Connor of UNC should be number one at 157. And Matt Scouts really replied, Based on what exactly? I'm seeing all this on Twitter, and it's flat out inaccurate. And the reason he's saying that and that I agree with him on is that Peyton Robb has better wins than Austin O'Connor. He has wins over all these guys, number two, number six, number seven, et cetera, et cetera. Austin O'Connor, best win over number five and number 16. So, yes, he is undefeated, and he shouldn't be number one, but that doesn't bring away the fact that he's a serious threat that a lot of people forgot about because he has been injured last season, and he, he's on his way to a dominant postseason. So that was the Virginia Tech Hokies who beat UNC 28-8, to but what happened with the probably the biggest dual meet in the ACC this weekend that decided the ACC title was that NC State pummeled Pitt. I mean, pummeled them. This resulted in a tie for the ACC. They beat them by a score of 23 to six and some of the results that happened here I mean it mostly went NC State's way except for 141 165 and 197 and that 197 bout which yes I'm going to talk about some of that controversy that happened there is that I mean NC State almost won that match as well okay and, and Reese Heller I'll, I'll tell you this at 184 gave Trent Hidley quite the match Hidley was ultimately came out with the victory decision 9 to 5 but it was quite the match for him. This match started at 149 pounds, ended with Kyrie getting a victory over Mickey Philippi. Probably the best win for Kai on the year. So what is this controversy that I'm talking about in this NC State 23 to 9 victory? Well, that is with Nino Bonacorsi and Isaac Trumbull at 197 pounds. And I'm just going to show you the clip here. And you see Trumbull drop Nino kind of on his head. And here it is from a different angle, a little bit wider of a shot. And you see him. I'm going to replay this here. He picks him up and brings him right down on his neck. And let me ask you, like, do you think this was intentional? Do you think this was bad? Do you think this was awful? I, as I was watching it, I was like, oh, my, like, I, I, I shook. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, watch for his neck because he got up and he was like, a little bit shaken. I don't think this was intentional. And Nino Bonacorsi, who ended up winning this match in overtime, ended up tweeting out, I've seen comments about my neck in the match against NC State, but just wanted to say there's no ill intent. I respect the staff and athletes at NC State. I understand the physicality of our sport. The most important thing to me is that my opponent and I both walked off safe. And that's great. You know, Nino Bonacorsi is... I mean, he's a standout guy. You remember him tweeting out something to A.J. Ferrari after his car accident. Him tweeting this out against Trumbull, who many have... He's come under fire by many wrestling fans. I don't think it was intentional. I don't think it was bad. But NC State ended up winning this victory against Pitt, resulting in the three-way tie. And that goes into my takeaways, is that, yes, NC State, number one, or were they? No, it's a tie. NC State, Virginia Tech, and Pitt. It's a three-way tie because NC State lost to Virginia Tech, who lost to Pitt, and Pitt lost to NC State. So that results in what a crazy ACC is and what it's becoming, what it has become. Because the future of the ACC is exciting. And you see this thing that I just brought up here is that there's even news that Dayton Pitzer, who has had a pretty good year so far, he took a couple losses in the ACC, is deciding to redshirt, having taken his five official true freshman matches, which just makes me more excited for the ACC. And now I'm going to tell you right now, the ACC is likely going to have at least one to two finals at Nationals. Now let's move to some quick lightning headlines, which the first of these is it's been 10 years since the Olympics made the announcement to drop wrestling. Can you believe 
that it has been 10 years already. And you see this article from Flow Wrestling where Kyle Klingman writes, did we learn enough from 2013 Olympic wrestling scare? Are we moving forward the sport enough in that? And it's a question that I'm going to leave open for you about whether you think we have learned enough. I think we learned from it. We moved on from it. It was a seismic shift, which is one of the things that Klingman hits on in the article, but we still have work to do if you want to promote this sport. Iowa State beat Illinois, another ranked victory for the Cyclones, in a phenomenal season, 21-13. The only match really of note here is Zach Bronigal upset Younger Bastida, another 197 pounds upset, make me look forward to the end of the year. Oklahoma State beat Stanford 25-9. Not like an uh, upset win or anything like that, but something to note here. Shane Griffith is continuing to have an exciting year. He ended up beating Wyatt Sheets, but it was in overtime. The 165 pounds weight class continues to be exciting and thrilling, and just like 197 pounds is one that I'm watching. And the other wrestling lightning headline is that Campbell went 2-0 on the weekend with their win over Chattanooga, a SoCon we don't get to nearly talk about enough, unfortunately, 24-13. to But what I'm excited about this year in the SoCon is that Campbell and App State are wrestling in the upcoming week. This is going to decide the SoCon, one of my favorite rivalries in all of college wrestling. Make sure you're watching out for that. And our third wrestling headline is that the top three teams in the Big Ten have been decided. This started on Friday night with Penn State earning a victory over Rutgers 33-8. They continue to roll on the weekend with a win over Maryland, who's had a good season so far. They just weren't a match for Penn State, which isn't a surprise. 44-3. This was a match that Maryland earned one victory at 125 pounds. This gave Penn State the regular season Big Ten title. They are the regular season champions. And one of my favorite matches here as that you're going to see is actually Roman Bravo Young. As we know, the number three ranked guy in the country. Let's watch him hit this sweet move here against King Sandoval. I mean, you just got to love watching him, right? He's just so fun to watch. Now, the Penn State Nittany Lions will finish their season against Clarion with a home match in Rec Hall. The final for many of the, well, for Roman Bravo Young at least, and any of the other Penn State seniors. This makes us, if, Iowa, if Penn State's number one, Iowa is number two with a dominant victory over Michigan. Now, Michigan has been a team that has competed in the past in the Big Ten, but not quite so much this year as Penn State and Iowa both put a whooping on them. This was a pretty much straight up match. Spencer Lee coming back, doing what he does. Bonus points. Brody Teske earning a tech fall. Real Woods with a major decision. Max Murin getting a good victory. I mean, from, from top to bottom, Iowa just had a good duel meet. But my favorite was actually at 157 pounds. An upset I want to point out is that Kobe Siebrecht at 157 beat Willowan. In sudden victory, you see him getting that takedown here and a beautiful, beautiful move and scramble there for Kobe Siebrecht, who came out on top. The Iowa Hawkeyes go absolutely bonkers here because it was a good victory. And I, I talked before about Siebrecht's season in the Penn State and Iowa preview. I said he hadn't had quite that victory to put him into really like say that, yeah, he should be that one of the top ranked guys at the weight, at least top 15. And this was a good victory. This was that victory that really sets the young guy off and saying, you got to watch out for him. The other match I want to talk about is Anthony Cassiope and Mason Paris. This match, Cassiope was actually up in the third period until Mason Paris earned a takedown and ended up racking up the riding time with that rally behind win to win 9-7 to seven over Anthony Cassiope. And as I said earlier, Mason Paris deserves that number one spot at a heavyweight. The Iowa Hawkeyes beat... Michigan 33 to 8. And so in my mind, they are the clear number two. So who is number three? I don't think it's I don't think it's Michigan, but I do think it's Nebraska, who had a great couple great victories on the weekend. One of them against Rutgers. The other one over Ohio State. 25 to 16. The Nebraska Cornhuskers beat the Buckeyes. It was an upset. And this is even without Rids love it, which is just crazy to me, right? It was a great duel from top to bottom. I mean, really, really was a fun duel meet to watch. My f the, the biggest match, though, of this entire 
Dumi was at 157 pounds. Are we seeing a recurring theme here? Watch Rob shoot in on Patty Gallagher with 12 seconds left in the third period. He's up five to four here. Patty Gallagher gets behind him, tosses Rob to his back. Looks like he's about to pin him, but ultimately does not get the takedown. And this resulted in Ohio State challenging the call. And I don't blame them. They should have challenged this call. Do I think it was a takedown? No, but Man, it was close. I guess the number one ranked guy in the country. Peyton Robb remains the top guy at 157 pounds. But, man, Patty Gallagher showed here that he's got some true grit all the way down to the end of the period. The other major match here was Mikey Labriola and Ethan Smith. I mean, just a fun match of back and forth all the way. I mean, each earning takedowns, being extremely flexible and defensive on their feet is just so fun to watch them. 4-4 four to four in the third period, and the match pretty much ended with this scramble that started a minute 17, with a minute 17 left in the third period. They were scrambling around, just, I mean, who, who, you didn't really know who was going to end up getting the takedown, but a lot of back and forth, and this is the what ended up happening here was Mikey Labriola gets behind on Ethan Smith, locks up a cradle, and time's ticking down with one second left on the clock. The ref awards two points. Wow. Did you think that was a two-point takedown or not? I, it, it's just shocking to me that it was with that much time left on the clock, which is a lot of fun. Now, Labriola remains undefeated, 23-0 and on the season, and one of the top three guys at 174 pounds. Nebraska, of course, beat Ohio State 25-16. to and even with a forfeit at heavyweight, they ended up winning this duel meet. Now, they will have Arizona State next week. And, you know, the thing is with Nebraska, with a early loss to North Dakota State and NC State and their one Big Ten loss to Iowa, it may be easy to overlook them, but they just had such a exciting, propelling end of the season. Like I said, even without Ridge Love. And my takeaways here is that, yes, Penn State's number one. That's no surprise. Iowa's number two. But I think Nebraska is a top five team overall, definitely top three in the Big Ten. I think it should be Penn State, Iowa, Nebraska. And these are the Flow Wrestling dual meet rankings as of last week. So there's some changes here. But Nebraska beat Northwestern this year, Ohio State, Illinois, and Wisconsin. I wish they would have wrestled Michigan. I, they would lose to Penn State, like just like they lost to Iowa, at least in my opinion. But I wish I could see them wrestle Michigan. And they're definitely a top 10 team, top 5 potentially. It's just hard to say whether they're better than Virginia Tech, Cornell, or Iowa State. Now, if you are excited for the postseason, make sure you hit subscribe to Fanco Wrestling. And to watch a video about how Bo Nickel got his start in the MMA, check out this video right here. Those are your wrestling headlines.